Hello everyone, here we are once again to praise God, to worship His name. So I want to read for you what it says in John 14, 6, that says, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. Today we celebrate His life, we celebrate because He is risen, we celebrate because His life is within us. So we want to praise you, Jesus, because you are good, because you're alive, Jesus. It's such an amazing gift that you give us. Your life is everything we want. And because of that, we want to worship you. We want to praise your name. We want to lift your name high in this place, in every heart, in every soul. May your presence be known in this place, in every house, Jesus. Because you are alive. To everyone who is sick, you are alive. To everyone who is in prison, you are alive, Jesus. Everything we need, we can find in you because you are the real life we need. So today we want to worship you and to honor your name the best we can. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's worship our God together. Let's praise his name. the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough then you came along and put me back together and is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh there's nothing jesus oh there's
nothing better and today we are in your presence and we worship you
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, Holy Assembly. My wife, Helena, and I believe in proclaiming together on faith the Word of God when we are ministering at the beginning of a meeting. We are going to proclaim 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to 24. So here we go. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify us and completely and may our whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls us is faithful, who also will do it. Amen. Today we will speak about resurrection. What happens after death? I think it's a question all of us ask ourselves sometimes but let's pray heavenly father god almighty in jesus precious and glorious and beautiful and powerful name i thank you for this day lord i thank you for every heart that are listening to these words from your word today father we humble ourselves before you as we enter into your glorious presence thank you for the touch of heaven that only you can provide Thank you for the hope. Thank you for the hope that only you can plant into hearts. Thank you for the ability to hear your voice through your spirit, O oh God. Help us today to hear your voice. Jesus, we love you. I thank you for everything you have done. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the cross. It is finished. It is finished. Holy Spirit, move and work. Help me to deliver this message today according to your perfect will. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. May every heart be open to receive. Take us from where we are in this moment to where you want us to be. Holy Spirit, we are completely dependent on you. Lead us, guide us, open our hearts, reveal us. Today I ask that these words from your word, that they will truly hit the mark. Hit those dry places, those dark places. Everything that needs to be revealed, let it come to light today. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Resurrection, what happens after death? What happens after death? I think it's a question everybody can ask. It doesn't matter where you're from, nature, where you're from, even cultures, nature, languages, nations, everybody asks themselves this question. It doesn't have to be a special belief system. Maybe you have thought about it in relation to the Word of God. Maybe you have not. The Bible is very clear about it because God's own Word explained it to us. And we will dive deeper into it today. The resurrection of the death. It's a reminder for all of us and it may be new to others. 
I want to start by repeating Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 15, 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. I repeat it. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. It's, it says a lot about where our, our focus should be. This is for those who are in Christ but still live according to their own flesh, relying on their own understanding or their own reasonings. It could be human philosophy or just the spirit of this fallen world. So Paul, he spends a lot of time explaining what we really live for. And that is eternity that is at stake. First of all, we need to understand the meaning of the word resurrection. What does it really mean? We have to go back to the original language to really get the right understanding of it. So we go back to the Greek word. And it means to stand up out of. It means to stand up out of. So resurrection is standing up out of death and out of the grave. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 to 24, we just read in our proclamation, we saw that man consists of three elements. It is spirit, soul, and body. And it is important to understand that it is the body that dies. And it's the body that will be resurrected. Because the spirit and soul never need to be resurrected. The spirit and soul never need to be resurrected because they have never passed into death. So we are talking about the resurrection of the body. I will read from Luke 16, 19 from verse 19 there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day at his gate was uh, sorry at his gate was laid a pega named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table even the dogs came and licked his sores the time can, came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, in Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony or pain in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone, anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abram, he said. But if someone from the dead go to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. And that's true. Even when Jesus rose from the dead, those who didn't believe in Moses and the prophets didn't recognize what had happened. Someone's supernatural proof and set their own proud standards 
and say, if so and so happens, then I believe. But God says, you have my word. That's all you need. If you believe and obey, it will carry you through. It is enough. However, there are certain very, very important features that this history points to that we should notice and hopefully understand and be revealed First of all, there was the same personality after death. There was the same personality after death. The rich man was still the rich man. And Lazarus was still this poor guy. It was still Lazarus. Same identity, if you want. In this history, it was related to mammon, money. None of them lost their identity. Because I have heard from many people that they say that everything just disappears after death and there is nothing left. It's not according to scripture. This story, it tell us, tells us something different. We continue in the same personality after death that we lived in this life. We talked last time, last Sunday, we talked about our character. We talked about our Christ-like identity. That's why it's so important to turn to Jesus Christ in this life. That there is an urgency. Scripture many places say again and again, today, today, repent. And then secondly, they could recognize each other. They could recognize each other. The rich man recognized Lazarus. And he recognized Abraham as well. And Lazarus recognized the rich man. And thirdly, there was this memory of life on earth. They did remember everything. Both the rich man and Lazarus, they could remember their circumstances. It wasn't forgotten. No, absolutely not. And number four, there was a consciousness of their present condition. It was really, really alive. They were absolutely awake. The rich man was in torment. It says that his tongue was burning with fire. Lazarus was in comfort and peace in Abraham's bosom. And the last, there was a complete separation between the righteous and the unrighteous. Each of them had a specific place and you could not just cross over. No, it was, they were set apart from each other. So when people, for example, nowadays talk about and say, rest in peace to everybody, regardless of faith, regardless of deeds, it is man's thoughts and hopes without God. Scripture says something completely different. Many people want it all without God. They want to have it all without Jesus. It is absolutely impossible according to the word of God. So this is what scripture shows from this story. I will briefly, I will briefly say it again. Number one, they had the very same personality. No loss of identity. Number two, memory of people number three memory of life on earth number four a clear awareness and number five there was a complete separation between the righteous and the unrighteous and, and many people ask but what happened to those who died before jesus himself 
and, and before he di died and rose from the from the dead Jesus death and resurrection created a change in the entire universe and in mankind it was the most important event in history of the entire universe and it affected what happened to those who died that specific event split human into two and the fate of souls before and after Jesus death and resurrection is not the same let's dive into what happened before Jesus death we have just seen in this story of the rich man and Lazarus that all souls that pass away they go to a place called Sheol in Hebrew in Greek it is called Hades the Greek word Hades it means the invisible world so everyone whether righteous or unrighteous entered the invisible realm called Hades or Sheol it was the place for the souls of the of the departed but there were two completely separated areas for the righteous and for the unrighteous we have talked about it many times before that there's nothing is neutral in the word of God and in the kingdom of God everyone was either righteous or unrighteous there's nothing in between you cannot be half half you have to end up in one of those two places the area of the righteous is called Abraham's bosom Abraham who is the father of all who believes it is our uh, forefather our ancestor and he welcomed them there and comforted them what happened when Jesus went to Hades what happened to Jesus when he died it's a good question isn't it because Jesus he was 100% human and he was 100% God but he also as a human he had a spirit a soul and a body and there are different statement statements about each of these three elements of Jesus personality talking about his spirit his spirit was commended to the father in Luke 23 46 it says when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice he said father into your hands I commend my spirit and having said this he breathed his last what happened to the soul of Jesus then in Acts 2 when speaking on the day of Pentecost Peter he quoted Psalm as an experience of Jesus and not of David the psalmist and he says David spoke here in Psalm 16 8 to 11 concerning Jesus and he says these words I foresaw the Lord always before my face for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad moreover my flesh will also rest in hope because you will not leave my soul in Hades so the soul of Jesus went down into the realm of departed spirits and in 1st Peter 3 18 19 it says for Christ also suffered once for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but made alive by the Spirit by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison who formerly were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah so Jesus went down into Hades but the body of Jesus was laid into the, to the tomb in John 19 40 then they took the body of Jesus and bowed it 
in strips of linen with the spices as the custom of the Jews is to bury. They would wrap a body in strips of linen, but they would include a great quantity of spices because the body would be expected to decompose and to give out a stench. Now the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So they laid, so there they led Jesus. And then after the resurrection of Jesus, the apostles and the, uh, the women went to the tomb. They all knew where his body had been buried, but they didn't find him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what happened to the total personality of Jesus? The Bible says that he committed his spirit to the fa Father. His soul descended into Hades. His body was laid in the tomb. But when he rose, his total personality was again united. He was a complete person. Spirit, soul and body. So what happened with Jesus' death and res res resurrection affected the whole universe. It also determined the fate of the souls at death. But since Jesus' resurrection onwards, the destiny of the righteous is not to go to Hades. No, it has a different and much better and more glorious destiny. Since the, the resurrection, our souls have a dif different destiny. For example, when they stoned Stephen and he was at the point of death. I don't want to read it all. I think it will be too long. But at the essence is, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So he knew that the spirit was to go directly to Jesus now. So this is the change that has taken place. This is the, the, the change that has taken place because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Right? This is important for those who have been cleansed in the blood of Jesus, been born, and get, born again and live faithfully for God. The destiny at death is for the Spirit to ascend directly to Jesus. Paul, he also says in Philippians 1, 23, 24, For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. So Paul, he was also completely confident that if at that time he died, he would be with Christ. That is one great change affected by the death and resurrection of Jesus. Another thing that happened is that the departed souls of the righteous who were in the bosom of Abraham, they were released. Let's read Ephesians 4, and this is quoting Psalm 68, and it's speaking about the resurrection of Jesus. Ephesians 4, 8 says, Therefore, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. I believe that he led captivity captive was that he released the souls of the departed righteous and took them with him up to heaven because they couldn't be set free until the penalty for sin actually had been paid. Jesus sacrifice on that cross. God accepted them as righteous. But after he sacrificed, 
himself, he went down into Hades. And at some point, he took them with him. That's the way I think it is. That's the way I believe it. They had been captives of sin and death. But he took the captivity captive. They became prisoners of Jesus. Prisoners of Jesus and righteousness. Jesus took captivity uh, captive. And the next thing that is very, very important is this. The resurrection of Jesus is the guarantee of our resurrection. That is if we are, of course, born again, completely committed to Jesus. First Col uh, Colossians 4.18 And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. So he is the firstborn from death. He is the head of a total new creation. He is the head of the body. He is the firstborn from the dead. And, he, and the resurrection is compared to a, a bird out of death. In a natural birth, the head, it comes first, and then the rest of the body. It's going the rest of the body will continue, it will follow. And so the resurrection of Jesus, it's the same principle. It's a guarantee that his body, you and I, that are born again, will follow him in resurrection. Paul says in Philippians 3, 20 to 21, For our citizenship is in heaven. For those who have been born again, we live on earth still. We are even citizen, citizens of a country here on earth. And we have a passport here on earth. But our real citizenship, it is in heaven. Our passport, it is the blood of Jesus. That is what really counts. Eternity. And it continues. Our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says, Who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. The original translation actually talks about our body of humiliation have you ever thought about that your body of humiliation what do i mean with that he will transform our body of humiliation that's the uh, the correct translation so that it can be molded into the body of his glory have you ever considered that we live in a body of humiliation we have been humbled because of sin no matter how wealthy we are no matter how worthy or healthy or whatever we may believe of ourselves or think about ourselves we live in a sinner's body and there are certain facts about the body you and I live in then that constantly remind us that we are sinners you can eat the best food in the world and the best drink the best wine but it all has to come out if you are nervous if you uh, uh, if you do exercise you will sweat no matter how worthy you are no matter how well educated you are in your life or how high you are in life, there is a humiliating body you are in. In 1 John 3, John says this, Beloved, 
now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be in other words we haven't yet seen the kind of body that we are going to have but we know that when he is revealed we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is then he is when he is revealed and we see him our body will be changed into the likeness of his body and the next verse is very important first john 3 3 and everyone who has this hope in him meaning jesus purifies himself just as he is pure so if you are really hoping for the resurrection and you are really hoping that it is something that you are doing then scriptures says that you are actually purifying yourself this is supernatural and what does it mean it means jesus he is our standard just as he is pure the scripture says and what is the standard of purity jesus just as he is pure so if you, so if you and i really are looking forward to the resurrection there must be some kind of evidence because if we are really looking forward to the re re resurrection we will seek to make ourselves more and more poor more and more holy make new decisions in life the we change ourselves, our language, our language is new, the way we think, the conversations we have. We will look at Jesus and we will be more like him. That is what we inside in our souls, in our spirit, in our heart. That is what we really want. We are a new creation. We are a transformed creation. If you are not really looking forward, I have to say that you are probably just using religious language. But it's not me to judge because this is the mark of everyone who is truly looking forward to this um, exchange from the body of humiliation to the body of glory. I will read it again. I think it's important. First John 3:3. 3, 3, it says like this, and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Do you have that mark? You have to ask yourself. Is that evidence in your life that you are really expecting and looking forward to the return of Jesus? It's you and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. It's your relationship with Jesus. I only bring this up because it's so important and hopefully it could be a reminder. Our body will be like his scripture says and how was it like there were no limitations he could for example ascend to heaven and back again down to earth appearing uh, a long distance walk through um, enclosed spaces to and from and through walls you can't put him into boxes for what's possible in your worldly mind also according to scripture i believe that we will have a similar kind of body and what will our resurrection bodies be like yeah i described it just a little bit here it will still have marks at our lives <clears throat> i will give you some examples it was um, Jesus he was very careful to emphasize or point out that when he rose it was the same body that had been crucified 
We will look in Luke 24. The disciples were all scared when he first appeared. They could not really believe what had happened. But Jesus said to them in Luke 24, 38 and 39, and he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And then in John 20, there is another record of the resurrection of Jesus. It says, he stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. Now, when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. And why did he do this? To show them it was the same body that they had seen crucified, right? It was the very same body. So when you get resurrected, you are not going to have a new body. No, you are going to have a different body, but it will be the same body just changed. Maybe you remember Thomas. He wasn't there when it happened and Thomas said, well, I will not believe unless I can see his hands and sight and put my hand into his side. And later Jesus appeared again and he said to Thomas, which reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hands here and put it into my side. In other words, the wound was still such that Thomas could put his hand into it. So you are not going to have a new body. No, you're going to have a different body, but it will be the same body just changed. Okay? Also, 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 38, answer this question, what our re resurrected bodies will be like. It says, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be but just a seed. Perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined. And to each kind of seed, he gives its own body. So your body is sown in burial into the ground as a seed. The same body will come forth, but a totally different kind of body. It means that you will be the same, but there will be an enormous supernatural transformation or change hallelujah what you sow determines what comes up but nevertheless what comes up is completely different it's completely different from what was sown it is really the same think about it you put something into the ground and it's amazing the beauty that comes up you plant something and what comes up a beautiful flower for example it is beautifully transformed the same when we hear the word of god what happens we come as we are we come as sinners we come broken but something inside us transform everything changes we remember our old life we remember the old man if you want or the old woman but something new is starting to grow it's starting to grow we are not the same any longer we recognize it but we are new it's like it's like getting a taste of heaven already it is a touch from heaven every time that you and i every time that we sow a seed we planned actually a miracle and the miracle is designed to remind us of our resurrection 
the same resurrection power that Jesus he rose up with is the same resurrection power when you come to faith when you are born again that is if we are totally committed to Jesus what he has finished it paves our salvation amen amen god bless you
Christ Jesus crucified. Salvation through repentance at the cross on which he died. Now hear my absolution, forgiveness for my sin. We indeed have been given 
resurrection power inside of us as children of God, as born again believers. We are indeed blessed. Have the word touched your heart today? The word that we have shared? If you are not yet a child of God, what I would like to ask you is, are you willing to accept that you are a sinner? Have you thought of accepting God as your Lord and Savior? Will you allow him to take your sins upon himself? He died for all of us and he took all of our sins on the cross. But the question is, are you willing to accept his sacrifice? Are you willing to make him the Lord and Savior of your life? God wants to give you life. And not only life, he wants to give you abundant life. Like it says in John 10:10, 10, 10, the enemy only comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, and if, if you are ready to do so, please just say after me. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive my sins. Today I will turn from my sins and by faith I will gratefully receive your gift of salvation and be born again. I believe that you are the Son of God who came to earth in the flesh, who died on the cross for my sins and was raised from the dead on the third day by God. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord and Savior, that your words are true, and I invite you into my heart and into my life. I believe that you took my sin, guilt, and shame on the cross. I believe that you redeemed me. You redeemed me from going to hell, and you have given me a place in heaven you have given me a life of purpose here on earth and a relationship with your Father. Amen. If you said this prayer today, we would love to welcome you into the family of God as a new child of God. And if you, if you would like to, you're more than welcome to send us a text message. Simply write, I have decided and send it to this Portuguese number, plus 351-96-219-5555. We would love to celebrate with you, but we would also like to give you some free resources. We hope to hear from you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.